Hello there, lovely people. It's Arlo from my chair here. It feels like it was just seven days ago that I was sitting in this very chair delivering the news to you. And yet, here I am. Time flies, doesn't it? Especially when you're stuck at home most of the time. You can't go do anything fun or go on any trips. Really just, ooh, it just whizzes by, doesn't it? Anyway. I have the news. Let's read the news. Rumors of an upcoming Nintendo Direct have been deepening for a number of reasons. Now, here's the thing though. If a Direct does get announced for July 20th, that means that you are already aware of it and me in this video that you're hearing is not aware of it. So that might lead to some awkwardness, but I'm just letting you know, just getting it out there first. So you don't have to <laughs> go down to the comments and be like, what, Does it, did he not hear about the Direct? We, these take a few days to edit and stuff. So there you go. I'm still gonna talk about all these rumors though, because that's my job, darn it. Nintendo Everything reports that a number of mystery SKUs have appeared in GameStop's database. If this is true, these seem to be placeholders called only available SKU. Of course, GameStop and Best Buy listings are rarely anything to really go by, but it is true that in the past, these kinds of things have often correlated with Nintendo Directs. Sometimes these databases will be updated with this kind of thing when we know that a Direct is coming. They have these placeholders in there so that when the Direct drops and the titles are officially announced, then they can go in and immediately update them to their full name so that people can go and immediately start pre-ordering. So as usual with these kinds of things, could be nothing, could be something, we will just have to wait and see. In similar maybe something, maybe nothing news, people have discovered two new private Twitter accounts. One seems to be related to Mario's 35th anniversary and the other seems to be related to F-Zero. Now, at a glance, I'm like, this is dumb. <laughs> It's, I mean, the idea is that it's kind of like with the SKU, it's a placeholder. It's something that is going to be updated soon, but they just like wanted to get the, uh, you know, get the, the at, whatever you call it, the letters that make up the name. They just put a bunch of A's as a placeholder for the actual like display name. And later when something big is announced, they will, they will update it obviously. 35th anniversary Mario, we've got all those rumors of the remasters coming, and then F-Zero. Oh, what if there's a new F-Zero announced or whatever? The only thing lending any sort of credibility to this is that you can see, uh, you can sort of see what email addresses were used to register these accounts, and you can see, you know, they, they block most of the letters, but you can see a couple of the letters, and people have noticed that this lines up with some of Nintendo's official email accounts that their other official Twitter accounts are have been registered to. That is something that absolutely could be faked. This whole thing could easily be faked. Someone just wanted to go through a lot of effort to get a lot of people excited, but it is yet another one of those things that we will at least look at and say, Hmm, interesting. And the whole 35th anniversary of Mario thing in general has led a lot of people to speculate that perhaps we will be getting specifically a Mario 35th anniversary Nintendo Direct. And if they have a lot to announce in terms of a bunch of different remasters or whatever, that could make a lot of sense. Personally, I'd be a little disappointed. I mean, I'd be happy to get anything at this point. You know, I, I want those remasters. Um, but if it was a Direct just focused on that, It'd be a little bit of a bummer. It's like, oh, so we just have Mario remasters for the rest of this year. Um, unless they wanted to announce Odyssey 2, I wouldn't complain. Anyway, yeah, that is a possibility, but there's no, you know, obviously, there's no solid evidence one way or the other at this point. In more substantial and, you know, actually real news, we just saw the release of Paper Mario Origami King, and a few days before it released, the entire game got leaked online. Just the whole thing plunked onto the internet. People with modded switches could just up and play it. And um, it seemed like a lot of people did <laughs> in a lot of the replies of my tweets talking about the game. Like half the replies are just like, oh yeah, I'm playing it now. So, wow. I'm not completely sure where this leak came from though. As always, I will express some disappointment. Uh, Nintendo tries really, really hard to protect this kind of stuff and them, you know, their games getting out early is exactly why a lot of people can't get early copies of their games because so many people have leaked so many things over the years, they started being like, okay, you know what? No, almost nobody is getting early copies for anything and I naturally a little bit bummed about that because I would love early copies, but whatever it is what it is. It certainly doesn't help Nintendo that this was a game that was particularly divisive. So many people on the fence about it, they weren't really sure if they wanted to buy it, so 
Yeah, it was uh, probably a pretty big target for uh, the leakage. I will say it's a, it is a little bit funny that Origami King got leaked just because uh, Color Splash got leaked by Nintendo themselves accidentally on the eShop. Uh, they like accidentally let some people play it before they were supposed to be able to. And now this one leaks like a week early. It's like they just, <laughs> they just can't catch a break. And uh, yeah, if you haven't played the game yet, obviously watch out for spoilers. They're apparently all over YouTube because people just love taking the last boss and putting it on a, th on a thumbnail. I had a person reply to me with a video of the last boss. That was very nice of them, but uh, yeah. So here's something that I'm sure we all absolutely expected. Apparently Nintendo's relationship with Lego did not end at the Mario Lego sets. They just revealed a Lego Nintendo Entertainment System. Uh, apparently you just build yourself a little NES with Lego and a controller and even like a little TV. And you, it's like this little rotating screen thing where you kind of like pretend like you're Mario and pretend like you're playing. It is um so weird. It is so, there's even a little bit of a uh, functionality with the Lego Mario from the other Lego Mario sets. It's, I, I just can't, it's one of those things that's very hard for me to begin to even know where they were coming from with this. It's almost like they went, okay, you know what? We're partnering with Lego. Hey guys, Lego, you wanna do a thing? Yeah, okay. And then they just went crazy with the brainstorming and they just came up with these wacky ideas. It looks like a very, Mechanically, a very interesting concept, and it looks like it'd probably be a lot of fun to build. Personally, there are few Nintendo products that just seem less appealing to me. I, it just, like, the regular little Lego Mario thing, because it's like a board game, I might play that, but this thing with the with the TV and the screen, I just, it, I cannot, it just does not look fun to me. So that you're like imitating him playing, how long is that gonna last? <laughs> How many times do you scroll that thing around, pretend like he's jumping before you're just like, all right, well, okay. That seems to be Nintendo's thing. That's the Labo thing too. It's like, let's make these things that are super expensive and it's fun to put together, but then once you do, you're kind of just, just kind of done. I don't know, sorry, I'm a grumpy old man. I'm sure some people will find this very, very fun. I just, I don't know, that price too. It's They're very, very expensive but I'm sure the right person is gonna absolutely love it. So along the same lines as the Mario Lego thing, apparently Nintendo is getting real chummy with all sorts of toy companies. They're also releasing Mario Monopoly and Mario Jenga. Now the Monopoly, I'm like, there was, I'm pretty sure there was already a Mario one. I don't know if this is a new version or something. Not 100% clear on that though. Uh, the Jenga, Mario Jenga. That's not one I ever considered before. This looks very different. This, I don't know, it's like, they're kind of, they're kind of brick shaped and you got like little guys to put in there. There's like coins and a spinner. I, is this a new Jenga thing? I'm an old man to made Jenga is just a bunch of blocks. Is this like, are these things that are in other versions of Jenga? Let me know down in the comments. I can't be bothered to look it up myself, but I love it. You got Bowser sitting up there and everyone else is all, I, the fact that they're bricks. I don't know what it is about the Mario brick. I've said that before, just something about it. It's just very, just very appealing to me. So a few weeks ago, Suda51 popped up in a New Game Plus Expo showcase. The whole thing was this funny little gag where he quote unquote accidentally showed some No More Heroes 3 footage behind him. Of course, it was very short and it was obscured by him, but this was just his funny little way of just presenting some new footage. I really, really enjoyed this and now, he has taken the joke even further, and I'm actually very sad that I missed it live. Uh, Devolver Digital, I actually talked about this in a previous episode. They're an indie publisher and they have their own direct style presentation. And apparently in the credits, Suda51 popped up again to show two seconds of additional No More Heroes 3 footage. I don't know why he was in a Devolver. I, I know he loves indies. He's just, he's got this great relationship with indies. So I guess he just wanted to pop up and devolve. There you go. Now other people's directs. You gotta watch out for Nintendo News for apparently. And I just have to wonder where else, like he's set a precedent now. He's popped up twice. Where else are we gonna see Suda51 pop up and show us a few seconds of No More Heroes 3 footage? Maybe in this video right here? All right, well, it was worth a shot. 
So recently, Sakurai revealed the Joker and Hero Amiibo, and Nintendo has confirmed solid release dates. In North America, they will be released October 2nd, and basically everywhere else, they'll be coming out a week earlier on September 25th. And I gotta say, they look pretty good. They look, I mean, you know, most of the Amiibos look good. Hero looks pretty all right, but he's just kind of standing there. I really love Joker's official art a lot more. Love the, love the, the coat flapping in the whooshy, I don't know, it looks, looks real nice. In Reggie related news, the man still, despite being retired, cannot sit still. He has been dipping his toes in all sorts of different places, and now he is joining Rogue Games Incorporated as a new strategic advisor. Honestly, I had never heard of Rogue Games before, at least not that I'm aware of. I looked at their website, apparently they do a lot of mobile games, I'm not really familiar with any of them, but there you go, you got Reggie on the team, I don't know why he picked these guys out of everybody, like is this him just wanting to build up a company, does he, does he roll a dice, does he pick names out of a hat? Who knows at this point? GameStop made more sense, GameStop is a big giant corporation, Rogue Games Incorporated though. I don't know, but I could, I, just, I gotta trust Reggie. <laughs> I gotta trust Reggie on this one. Bitmap Books will soon be releasing Game Boy, the box art collection. The book is being written by Damien McFerrin of Nintendo Life fame and contains box art from Game Boy games. It's a celebration of the best Game Boy box art there is. So if you're interested in that kind of thing, just kind of art and gaming history and all that stuff, go check it out. Apparently this is a follow-up to their other book, Super Famicom, the box art collection. Did not know that existed, but now I know that both of these things exist. So there you go, box art's cool. So recently the Pokemon company brought raid battles to Pokemon Go, and now they are bringing them to Pokemon the TCG. Cool thing is though, this is not at least yet in the form of an official product. This is simply a variant that they have created. I have no doubt some fans have created similar variants, but now this is an official variant that you can do with your own Pokemon cards that you already have. I really like this kind of thing. It's very much in line with it. I used to play Magic the Gathering and there were a lot of uh, just fan-made kitchen table kind of variants. You could just, you know, you could make the cards interact in a lot of different cool kind of ways. And so I'm, I'm very much for this kind of thing. It was already a fun idea in the game. So now you can have like a boss Pokemon and bring your other cards and try to bring it down. It's fun. This is fun. Though I guess, to be fair, even though there isn't an official product for you to buy, you can go to Pokemon's official site and you can find a digital raid battle assistant, which lets you kind of track what's going on in the battle and helps you keep track of it. So that's pretty cool. So Nintendo has begun offering official Smash style envelopes and invitation letters on the My Nintendo website available as a reward. You can just make your own special fancy kind of smash invitation. It's a very nice little thing, though unfortunately it is only available in Japan at present. So I hope you live in Japan or you don't want it. I mean, it wouldn't be like that hard to recreate this kind of thing, but you know, it's cool having like the, the official Nintendo one. It's very cute. So Gamescom is coming up. In case you don't know, Gamescom is the largest video game expo in Europe. It's pretty much one of those big giant ones like E3 where all of the biggest major companies all come together and show off new games and all that kind of good stuff. Though it is a little disturbing to learn that Nintendo will not have any kind of presence. Uh, apparently Sony won't either. Sony's been also kind of doing their own weird kind of own thing, but they've also like had a lot to show and they've been do it, like, doing their own thing. Whereas Nintendo is very strange not being on this list. I mean, like, everyone else is there. Everyone else, Activision, Bethesda, and everybody. All has been kind of quiet on the Nintendo front, and so uh, that's why this kind of thing is, is extra weird. Obviously, if there's a Nintendo Direct coming up, then that could change a lot of things. It's just strange going into a new console generation and not kind of, like, fighting to keep your place in the race, you know, fighting to keep yourself relevant. I know, overall, the Switch isn't really competitive with the other major consoles. They sort of offer different stuff, but at the same time, there is competition going into a holiday season. Kids are gonna want one thing or another thing. These are very different products. People can't afford to buy all of the products most of the time. So I'll just say that if Nintendo is confident enough in themselves to skip Gamescom, I certainly hope they have a lot of other cool stuff up their sleeve. I mean, obviously there's the possibility that they 
can't and they're still just struggling. We don't know what's going on at Nintendo. Maybe they can't go to Gamescom. I don't know why everyone else would be able to, but they can't. I don't really know, but you know, I mean, everybody, Xbox, Sega, Bandai Namco, EA, like all the big ones are there. It's just not a time to be quiet. Just really, just a new console launch here. Not a time to be quiet and be like, well, we got Paper Mario and maybe we got some Mario remasters, but I don't know, that's about it. If you wanna buy a Switch, you can, but you know, we, wanna, we won't pressure you or anything. <laughs> So there is yet another Animal Crossing glitch that I was not previously aware of. Apparently people have found ways to create a fourth level. In the, in the real game, you can only do three levels, but they've figured out a way. they figured out a way to do just about anything. Apparently in the most recent update, Nintendo patched out this glitch and people have found a workaround. They just found other ways to trick the game into allowing them to build a fourth terraforming level. Will the next update just patch it out again? Will they find yet another workaround? Who can say? That's it, I am done, you are done, we are done delivering and or listening to the news. So I wish you a wonderful day and I insist that you have a wonderful tomorrow too. I don't know, make it a solid week of being wonderful. Why not? You're wonderful. But I will say like once you break once you break form and you wish someone a good anything more than a day or like a set amount of time, like a good rest of your whatever, the convention or anything like that, once you kind of break that, then it's like, you could go any any distance. What? Oh, you're gonna wish me a good week? Why don't you wish me a good month? You jerk, why don't you wish me a good rest of my life? So that's kind of, that's kind of the problem there. Cause then you can't just be like, hey, have a good rest of your life. Ha, I never have to wish any of you a good anything ever again. I beat the system. Have a good day.